So it seems Fidelity FX Super Resolution 3, also known as FSR 3, has been finally introduced in The Last of Us Part 1, as was expected after the announcement that they made like some weeks ago. And since I did some videos when FSR 3 launched, I test FSR 3, I test FSR 3 when it came to Starfield, and I also tested FSR 3 with Robocop, which was a really broken implementation, well I thought maybe, maybe, I should try and, well, test FSR 3 in The Last of Us as well, because, for example, Starfield was a very good implementation, while Robocop was a really poor one, and Avatar actually went from a, a very good implementation to a poor one as well. So let's try The Last of Us Part 1. So this time I really wanted to know how The Last of Us would work with FSR 3 frame generation. For now I have the RTX 4070 Super, so I will test firstly with the RTX 4070 Super, of course. Then I'll take this GPU off, I'll put for example the, um, the 7800 XT and I'll see how that goes, okay? Because I really want to know how it works on both Nvidia side and AMD side as well. Not in terms of performance, but in terms of fluidity mostly. And if we're talking about fluidity, we have to talk about today's sponsor that will fluidly take off that annoying Windows mark that you have on the right top corner. <laughs> today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So we're back now with the RTX 4070 and as I told you I'm using this card because that's the card that I that I had here so I imagine that it was way better to test uh, the RTX 4070 Super right now since I had it on the PC. Now as you can see we have um, several things implemented, well, you have the render scale, you have the, the scaling mode now if you look there you can see AMD FSR 3 Super Resolution is a cutting edge temporal upscaling algorithm and is available on any GPU and then we have the frame generation enabled as well. As for the anti-aliasing mode since we have FSR 3 we also have the AMD FSR 3 native AA which allows for enabling FSR 3 frame generation and is available on any GPU. Basically you can use the FSR 3 as an anti-aliasing instead of, the, of using the normal TAA. For example one thing that I noticed immediately look at that rail. That rail even at native settings is shimmering a bit not especially here for example in this scenario where I'm moving but as soon as you enable FSR 3, let's say for example, let's start with a native AA. As soon as you enable the native AA, FSR 3 actually does a better job there and there's no more shimmering. Of course, when you move, there will be shimmering, of course. And in most scenarios, we had lots of shimmering on the walls and so on. And FSR 3 actually helps fixing that a lot, even in terms of native AA. And believe me, I, I think that native AA is, is not the way to go, especially because uh, in terms of nati native AA, FSR 3 tends to over sharpen things quite a lot and you can't go uh, with less sharpen that we have here. Look at the, the faces, for example, look at, look at his face, look. It is way, way over sharpened, even if you look at the walls, it, is, it has way more sharpened than it should be over sharpened and in some scenarios looks way worse than it should be. In most scenarios actually going uh, for the opposite, going for example for instead of native AA, going to let's say AMD FSR 3 super resolution quality mode with the sharpening 10 or even less than that, let's say 5 is the best way to go in most scenarios. So as you can see it still looks better, in my opinion overall it will look better than native AA because it isn't as over sharpened as a native AA. Still, it is over sharpened as hell, so let's just decrease that to zero instead of five. Yeah, no sharpening whatsoever. Yeah, looks much better now. Take off, take off that sharpness filter and it looks much better than it looked before. Kind of handles some shimmering better than a native AA. But still, the over sharpened effect is quite a bit in some scenarios. That's why I tend to use quality mode over the native AA, even though quality mode has less, uh, lower render resolution, so it won't look as great. Now, if you look, for example, at the, um, at the native, let's say that, let's take off the, the scaling and let's use native DLSS, which is the DLAA. If we go into the DLAA, we still have um, we still have a quality image, but it doesn't feel as over sharpened 
as the as the results that we have with FSR3. Even if you look at his face, it still looks a bit over sharpened, but definitely, definitely better than before. And even the buildings and so on, they just don't look as over sharpened. Although, as as we start moving, look look for example at that brick wall. As we start moving, yeah, even with motion blur disabled, yeah, we lose lots and lots of data there. As soon as we go, for example, to the default AA, we lose way less data when moving with the native TAA. Yeah, compared, of course, to the to the DLAA. The difference is definitely there. Now, the thing that you want to see is the frame generation. And sadly, from my own testing, frame generation isn't that great in this title as well. I don't really know what's going on. The first FSR3 frame generation implementations were really great, once again, with Avatar and so on. But as soon as we went to, to newer frame generation implementations, like, for example, Robocop and so on, the frame generation isn't really that great. Starfield, for example, has a great FSR3 implementation and it works very, very, very nice. And I don't really know what's, what's happening here. So now enabling FSR3 frame generation, okay, it is here with a native AA. The first thing that you can look, for example, is at the frame timeline. The frame timeline is kind of messed up. The frames shouldn't be this high, at least we shouldn't have that thickness that you're seeing on the frame timeline, that shouldn't be happening. And I can tell you right away that although it is, although it is smooth, it feels like it has a way, way higher amount than it should have of motion blur. We, we still have way, way mo more motion blur than we should have, and I believe that's due to the frame time that we're seeing right now. I believe that playing the game, let's say, at maybe at 30 FPS, 30 FPS, maybe at 80 FPS would be better in terms of smoothness than playing at 140 with this GPU. We yeah, we have lots of motion blood. It just doesn't feel connected. And even if I look at my LG monitor in terms of uh, frames, yeah, FreeSync is working in this case, G-Sync. G-Sync is working correctly. I can see it right now. It is linking to the FPS, but at the same time, since the frame timeline is kind of messed up, it feels different. Although I did try, for example, Starfield implementation, and the frame timeline was kind of messy with NVIDIA GPUs as well, but worked great with AMD one. So I still have to see how the the 7800 XT works. But this one, yeah, it doesn't work that great. So if I go here and disable the frame generation just with native AA, let me see what do we get. We get 70 FPS, more or less like I was talking about. Yeah, and even with 70 FPS, look, 70 FPS feels much better than the 120 FPS that we're having before. And I believe that's because the frame timeline was completely messed up. And in good implementations like Starfield, what happens is that 120 FPS will look much better with frame generation than 80 native FPS in good implementations. And The Last of Us seems to not be one of those. Let's try the scaling mode with quality, maybe just five of sharpness. And overall, it looks good. We still have lots of shimmer there in the bottom. Yeah, the shimmer is insane there. So it is better in terms of movement, movement quality compared to the LSS or the LAA, but in terms of shimmering, yeah, it's it's much worse. Let's see how frame generation works here in this specific scenario. And we go from 90 to 140, and usually we should have more FPS, but I mean, this is an NVIDIA card. But yeah, so we went from 90 to 140, and I can tell you right away that 90 native FPS look better than 140 with a frame generation. I mean, it seems like this game implementation is um, just, just so it's out there, yeah, it's I just broken, and my goodness, look at that shimmering. Like right that side. shimmering is insane. So it was better before I'm compared to native TAA, way. but is now much, much worse, even at ultra settings. Yeah, and native is almost perfect. Native is almost perfect. We still have some shimmering, but man, look at that. Yeah, FSR3 just makes everything worse in this case. And yeah, with the LSS, the shimmer is basically gone. And overall, the image quality is much better, and we're having 90 FPS. So yeah, in this scenario, the LSS is much, much superior. Once again, we lose, if you look there, it is way blurrier when we're moving with the LSS compared to FSR. FSR does a much better job in terms of movement. With FSR you have way, way more shimmer, but 
with the LSS, uh, you have kind of a, um, a smudge, kind of a, a motion blur enabled option when you're running around with the LSS. And like with FSR that you have way more shimmer, but at the same time, once again, you don't have that image loss. Look at there, for example. The image loss is brutal. As soon as I stop, great. As soon as I start moving, yeah, lots of artifacts. The LSS looks bad in this specific scenario due to this. And once again, FSR 3 looks slightly better. Not that much better, but slightly better. But I mean, frame generation is just not working as it should. Frame generation works really, 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 really poorly here. I don't really know how they make these implementations if they don't really work. Just don't make them. Why do I want frame generation if the frame generation uh, result will feel worse? Now, one thing that I noticed in this game is that we can also use VSync with frame generation, something that was working especially great with Starfield. Let's try it out and see how VSync affects the frame generation performance. We obviously, we are gonna have way, way more input latency, of course, that's, that's a given. And we do have way more input latency. But at the same time, now we have VSync enabled and the frame timeline actually got a bit better. The frame timeline is a bit better, looks better. And in here, in this specific scenario, at 152, 150 something, it looks better. It looks okay. But it still feel it, it, it still doesn't feel like 160 FPS, you know what I mean? It feels kind of okay-ish, but it doesn't feel like really 160 FPS. But, well, let's just put the 7800 XT in the computer and see how it goes. A few moments later... And, well, here we are now with the 7800 XT. And, well, in terms of FPS numbers, it is, at least in this game, it is more or less the same as the 4070. And we are running the native TAA implementation, which, sincerely, looks fine. Which, well, native is usually always the best. Usually. Not always, but usually. And as you can see, it runs at 90, 100, something like that. Let's try, firstly, the... Well, let's try native AA, firstly. Native AA... Yeah, and we, we still have lots of oversharpening, in my opinion. Yeah, on Joel's face, it's just, yeah. But overall, it's overing 80, 90, something like that. So let's try the frame generation and see how it goes. Let's enable frame generation. And what I can notice immediately is that the frame generation gives us more FPS on the MD side. And look at the frame time. The frame time looks nice. But what about the fluidity? Uh, it is definitely working better than the NVIDIA GPU. Definitely feels more fluid than the NVIDIA GPU, but at the same time, it doesn't feel as fluid as it should feel. It is okay, at least. Let's go to the to the specific to the specific capital part. Sorry, in order to to have lower FPS numbers to stay within the free sync range. Because it does feel much better than the NVIDIA side, definitely. Much better than with the 4070 Super. But at the same time, okay, 130 stairs. FPS with frame generation. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like 130 FPS. But definitely feels much better than the, the NVIDIA side. Means means that, well, of course, FSR 3 would be more optimized for the, the AMD cards the same way that the LSS is more optimized for the NVIDIA ones, and that makes sense entirely. The thing is... Even with the AMD parts, it doesn't perform as it should perform. Starfield, for example, and the first implementations of Avatar performed really, really smooth. And the gameplay experience was really, really good. But in this case, yeah, it just, yeah. Not even close to, to real 100 FPS. Let's, let's not even talk about real 120. But well, let's try the... Um, let's try, for example, with VSync and see how it goes. Now we're running VSync as well. The, the line is even flatter. And it is once again slightly better, at least from what I can notice. It is slightly better indeed, but... Let me just do the opposites. Disable frame generation, and instead of the anti-aliasing mode, let's select FSR quality without frame generation. Okay, so we went from 
yeah, we went to 1996, 1990 something FPS without frame generation feel much, much better and much smoother than the 120 with frame generation. And it shouldn't because once again, I even tested Starfield yesterday and the game just performs really, really smooth with the frame generation, something that does not happen with the newest implementations of Avatar, does not happen with Robocop as well, and it's sad to to see that happening because for example farming simulator works well and some other games where they implemented frame generation they work it, it works well i don't really know if this is an am default uh due to the version 3.03 .03 of of fsr3 maybe that's the issue the issue is there because avatar avatar had the first generation fsr3 implementation and it worked well and as soon as they updated to the 3.03 .03, the problem started appearing so i don't really know if this is am decided or uh, game sided, but definitely it works better on the MD side, but still, yeah. I mean, it kind of feels better when I'm when I'm going over my refresh rate, and I don't really know why. As soon as I go over my refresh rate, it works fine, it feels fine, but as soon as I go inside the refresh rate, it, it just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good, for example, 170 FPS. If I go here and disable the frame generation, I get 100 and yeah, it, overall it just feels much better, much better to have once again 100 FPS without frame generation than having 120 or 30 or whatever with it. So the, this just shows once again how poor the, the FSR3 implementation is and I must say that once again as well I don't really know if this has to do with AMD and their FSR3 3.03 implementation or if it really has to do with uh, the game implementation because yeah I tried for example the FSR3 mod here and the FSR3 mod, the mod works well in this game. If you go and you put the mod here the mod works well, so we don't have this these issues, we actually have uh, a smooth experience. So the mod works well, but the official implementation doesn't. S and with this in mind, I can only think of, once again, of the 3.03 .03 version of FSR3 presented by AMD being the issue. I don't see any other chance since the modded version works well. The same for Robocop. I go with the mod for Robocop, the mod works perfectly and the game just performs as it should be really, really smooth. As soon as we go with the official implementation, the game performs like crap. In order for people to use fra frame generation, if the mod works, the official implementation should work and in order for people to use frame generation, the frame generation needs to be much better like in Starfield, Farming Simulator and so on. In this case, The Last of Us, yeah, it works better on the MD side, but still much worse than the mod. Uh, so that makes no sense. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know about your experience in this game. If FSR 3 frame generation works good for you or not, because for me, it definitely doesn't. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.